Hello there, you're welcome to my space, Eunice Adubamo in my space and I am back with uh, my friend Julian Mawanda. We were here last week uh, speaking supernatural childbirth, we are back speaking supernatural childbirth but today we want to actually pray with women and men who are believing God for the gift of children and they, have, they are looking for partnership. Remember last week we emphasized the issue of partnership we emphasize that two uh, when two agree concerning anything on earth, the Father in heaven shall do it. We also agree that two are better than one. They have a better return for their work. And a code of three will be stronger. So with the Holy Spirit and our friend Jovan, who is on the camera, we are going to believe God together with you. And we shall also be in the chat section in case anyone needs uh, prayer, in case anyone needs counseling. I told you that, yes, I do counseling, but not, you know, as much as Julian does it, we are ready to take you through counseling and to stand with you in prayer. So last week, Julian shared with us her testimony. Uh, Julian, say hello to the people before we take this forward. Hello, everyone. It's good to be with you today. Just that. <laughs> yeah, I am very blessed. <laughs> I am blessed to be here. Thank you, Dr. Inis, for, for the opportunity to be on in your space. I trust that the Lord has answers for everyone. Yeah. And God will do mighty things. Last week, and I hope you have you all have this psalm written on your heart, Psalm 57, verse 2. We concluded by saying that God performs all things for Eunice, okay? I don't know about you, but he performs all things for me. And uh, to set the pace for us to pray today, I will share with you in form of encouragement, because the Bible says that we should speak to one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, making music in our hearts to the Lord. But also the Bible says that they overcame, and therefore we also overcome by yes. the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Mm. So last week I shared with you about my second-born child, Ronel, and uh, most people actually didn't know that testimony, but many people know about about my last one child, Kel, uh, Adriel Kel. Um, so when I was expecting Kel still, uh, conception was a breeze, you know, same thing. I did not say, oh, I've taken long without conceiving. I conceived just when I wanted to conceive. And uh, of course, those were the days when I did not understand what God was doing in my life. So I was still in pursuit of a girl. Mm. So <laughs> I think uh, even the motivation to conceive Kel was, I'm looking for a girl, I'm looking for a girl. Now I know what God is doing in my life. I'm not looking for a girl anymore. But anyhow, um, so I conceived Kel, everything is going well. And then I go to hospital. By this time, my, my husband has changed jobs and uh, the insurance is a bit different and everything so i go to a different hospital from the other two quite honestly i would have gone for the same hospital because i i enjoyed being in ihk i had not gotten issues with the hospital i i was familiar with the hospital you know when you get into a familiar environment there is something about the familiar environment but anyhow i changed the hospital so I go for the first antenatal. I, this time I discovered that I was expecting quite early in the pregnancy. So I think I went for the first antenatal uh, at two months. Mm. So that was probably about eight weeks or thereabouts. So I go for the antenatal and uh, the doctor, a fairly young gentleman, asks me, how old are you? And uh, those are sort of like the questions they ask. When was your last period? How mm. many children do you have? It is it is it. Mm. So he asks me how old I am, and I tell him how old I am. Kel is making seven years in December. I am making forty three years in September. So just you know, go backwards and know how old I was. Mm. I was about thirty six, going to thirty seven. So I tell him, and out loud he says, "Oh." Down syndrome. Like he asked me, How old are you? I answer, I'm 37 years old. He answers back, Oh, Down syndrome. My goodness. Okay. I've never heard of the, I had never heard of, of the connection between my age and Down syndrome. Like, you know, so I'm thinking, Maybe he's seen a message somewhere. I mean, you know, I'm thinking it's a joke. The enemy has started on me yeah. and he's going to sift me. You know that scripture that we are, where God told, told Cain, eh? mm. that the devil is sifting you. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now me, I did not sense. So anyhow, um, I, I, 
I, I think it's business as usual. And they are just shaking, shaking, like a bum thinking business as usual. <laughs> the devil has put the game up. Me, I think it's business as usual. So then the young man says, we are going to do this test and this test and this test and this test. Because you know, people your age, the risks of getting down, children with Down syndrome. Of course, at that point, I still think it's a joke. So I'm like, this man can't really joke. They take me to the lab, they check. When I brought back the results, he was out of hospital. So they take me to another doctor to interpret the results. Of course, like my father used to say, but even doctors say that if they took you now to check if you have malaria, mm. what, what mm. like yeah, there are those who, they, they sort of so obviously the chances that of all these tests they did, some were positive, negative, were a bit high. So some tests were positive, but the bigger number was negative. So this a bit of older lady, the guy that saw me. Um, she looked at the results and she said, why did they tell you to do this? I said, you know, the doctor said, my age, and then the doctor said, ah, this is okay, there is no problem. So I'm like, yeah, the young man must be okay. I go home, but then the doctor says, since you are the other one's patient, please come back and see him next week. So I go back. And when the young man sees my results and sees what the other doctor said, he said, it's impossible. This one is positive. This one is positive. That child has done. I'm thinking the declaration is this. That, so the whole week I hadn't prayed anything about it. Mm-hmm. But that is when my spiritual antennas go like the battle line we are drawn those, those days and me, I did not know. Mm-hmm. Now I have to start. So I'm like in a race where you're running to Guru, but mm-hmm. for you, you're still at Karuma, mm-hmm. but the never arrived in Guru. Okay, he's about, mm. a, so that's where I am, and I have to sprint. So here, I just got, I just need to get a plane. No, you call me Kubanga. Yeah, not So anyhow, I listened to this young man. I don't remember half of the things he said because I was in a daze. Like I was listening to him, like, how can the son say this and you? So he said, now we are going to test this, test that. So he sent me to the lab, and of course, because like he wanted when I came out. The things he had sent me to test were negative, positive, and of course, he had succeeded in instilling fear in me. So for me, I went to the lab with fear. I said, I even, you know, as you're sitting out there in the lab, I started googling Down syndrome. Mm. Is it down or, or down? Auntie Minale, or Zoom, where we grew, who grew you? Like, our viewers, you click. Mm. So you said Down syndrome. So anyway, so I start to even Google, I go to Google, I start, then I start to picture myself with a child with Down syndrome. You know, like I start to make formations. I'm right there at the lab. So obviously, when I get the results, they started to align with what I was thinking. So he tells me, sits me in his office, he says, now we, you know, we need to be sure, but these are the implications. So that, he said many things I don't remember, but the one thing he said that is at the back of my mind up to today is he said your child will also will also also i think he will be abnormal and he will have no spinal cord so he will never be able to see it he's just going to be a cabbage julian we had two months of pregnancy when he said that a certain part of me remember you know me i love the story of david mm-hmm. i love the story of david saying what other city is this? I love that part. So as he's speaking, yeah, he started to look like a baby. You know, like you know how this is another baby you're seeing, and then he said, No, 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 no. That's what I started to see. I looked at him and I saw a baby, and I said, What is this baby sitting in front of me saying about a child of Eunice and Bango? Do you know what it means to carry a child when you're Eunice and Bango? You know, so I started to ask myself all those questions. Faith arose. The warrior in me stood up and I said, the battle lines have been drawn. We are going to fight this one. I test again with some corner. Now, I like the story of Samson, where the Bible says that he killed a thousand Philistines with a job on the banana tree. But the Bible says he stood and he hit them until his hand froze. I said, I am going to fight this one eh? mm. until my hand freezes. Mm. So when I got out of his room, I tore everything he had written. Me. He had even sent me to some lab in town that I didn't go to. I took everything. I told the lab investor. I took everything because he had even said that I need to come back next week. They are going to get water from the baby's head or her brain, whatever that is, and take it to South Africa. 
kugamba gachi susiza mm. so i threw the things in the bin at that hospital which i shall not name mm. and i walked out but the truth is something in me had already been shaken mm. so there was some there was a shaking and then there was a warrior who had arisen so they were always in conflict mm. there was that i was battling with that so when i go home i tell my husband and my husband said you believe that i said i don't but the truth is i am scared and so my husband told me now you're going to make a decision to either stay scared or to believe god because the bible says in hebrews that without faith it's impossible to believe god so he said before we start to believe god mm. you had better get faith mm. because we are going to be going in prayer but we won't please god and if we won't please him it's like a child who has this please you coming and asking you for something you're not going to give them so he told me i want you to listen to the word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word so i want you to listen to the word of god until your faith arises before we get into this business of asking those days i used to consume data worth probably about 30 35000 a day my husband would be just like i would just tell him data and he would know data and he would i went to a chemist called science i listened to faith teachings i went into chemist hagen science I listened to faith teaching. Everything that is to do with faith, I looked for Jesse Plantis. I like anyone who I knew was a teacher of the word. Derek Prince, Joyce Meyer. As in, I listened and listened. Like in my working moments, I would just be listening and then I would sleep and listen. Did I get attacked by fear? Yes, many times. Did I uh, worry? Yes, many times. But I listened to a lot of faith teachings. Of course, I had moments when I would wake up in the night and I would start to imagine a baby who can't sleep, who can't, and I would sit alone in the living room, the light is off, and I would cry. I remember those nights my husband would come and stand and look at me when I'm crying. And then he would say, so, Eunice, what have you accomplished by crying there? Like, you Cut you down, mm. right? Uh-huh. And of course, there are moments I thought she was a bit insensitive. I was also going through a personal battle that I don't want to talk about, but uh, just to tell you, because of that personal battle, I didn't have friends. I did have lots of family near me, so I was here fighting this thing at all. And remember, we we said we said in the last week that mm. it is important for you to have cover. Yeah, it's important for you to have cover. Mm. So anyhow. Uh, shared with uh, Auntie Claudette still and uh, she started guiding me on how to pray she started praying with me during that time i was also a protege like i was being trained and mentored by another gentleman Uncle Victor Obindo remember Uncle Victor mm. and so i you know i used to go all, around with him in many different places to pray and you know every time i listened to him pray you know my faith started to arise i decided not to get out of church i continued with the ministry of school of prayer i continued teaching but I, battling on the inside i would cry many times i would cry many times but i listened to a lot of faith teachings and then i started you know for me the scripture that ministered to me most during that time is that scripture that says you know you speak things that are not as though they are mm-hmm. so i i i started to speak i started to speak every every waking moment i would speak and i went on babycenter.com you know that site yes. and i started to see what they say this week your child's uh, nails are growing or your the hands are growing or the spinal cord is growing or whatever and i would pray by faith into them out pray by faith into them out look up scriptures about hands about anything crazy about eyes but you don't have eyes that see I'll be like no my child has eyes that see the eyes are forming you know so I kept on praying and praying for the child and you know when I told those papers that was at at uh, eight weeks I did not go back to hospital I also decided that I think let me sit uh i would not go to hospital when i felt my level of faith had arisen i started to ask god i started to pray and my husband i thank god for him he is not you know a pushover like he's not those people who will push you so he used to ask me so what your plan and i told him i don't want to go to hospital until um the lord tells me to and this is important because i'm not saying do the same thing mm-hmm. um because for me i was moving by how the lord was speaking to me and god knew that i was not ready you know and i also needed to identify a doctor you know like uh, that doctor natalia kalebe mm. so um my husband said fine so he said but what are we going to do we are expecting i said uh, i've i've had two children before folic acid is the thing so 
Kafolic kibu to kagwa when you replenish. So he kept on bringing me the folic acid. I kept on taking the folic acid. I started taking the folic acid like Holy Communion. Because you see, the Bible also tells us that we should do Holy Communion as often as we remember the Lord. And the Bible says that many of us are sick, Down syndrome. Or we fall asleep, death, because we do not remember the death of uh, and the resurrection of Jesus. So I started to do Holy Communion. My husband is um, a man who every time we get such reports, he believes that if uh, you're sick of a headache, they will give you Panadol two, ty- two times three. Mm. But when you have cancer, it will be chemotherapy and they will do it almost every hour. Mm. So he usually says that when the condition is there, increase, increase. the dosage, increase the amount. Yeah. So back when you come in, you know, you have best in the number, <laughs> you know. So he increased, you know, so he would give me communion in the morning. I would take communion at lunchtime. You know, I started to turn all my food into communion as like I am going to eat the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ until my body becomes his body, until my blood becomes his blood, until this child literally becomes the body of Jesus. So at about seven months, um, I'm, I've still not gone back to hospital. I'm chatting with a girlfriend uh, one day. She, uh, she had just given birth, so I was telling her, oh, congratulations. So I asked her, the Spirit of the Lord moved me and said, talk to her about where she gave birth. So I asked her, I say, oh, Helena, where did you give birth? She tells me, uh, and she says, oh, by the way, this is a very good doctor. He's in Tinder, he's this. And the inner witness says, go to that doctor. Yeah. So I, I shared with her, I said, well, I need to go to that doctor. And she says, you've not done until now. Until now, I told her that, well, uh, I went to a doctor earlier who gave me a report like this and that. So outside my family, outside Brand and I, mm-hmm. Helen and maybe I think that Helen is the first person that I told. So she said, oh my God, okay, I will uh, make up an appointment for you. But she didn't, thank God, she didn't tell the doctor my story. She just told the doctor that my friend is sensitive. That's why she told the doctor. She said, my friend is sensitive, so please. Uh, be careful with her. So when I got in there, I had prayed that the doctor wouldn't ask me for the previous uh, whatever medical documents because you know sometimes they bias. Like mm-hmm. he would just read it and be like, ah, then he would also pick up the Down yeah. syndrome from there. So when I got there, the doctor didn't even ask me why I've come at seven months. You know, he just started like how you start with a new patient. So, you know, we do all the, the tests and everything is good, everything is great, we do the scan, everything is looking okay. But you see, it's Down syndrome. You know, so you're not sure that the scan might be showing the, the, the spinal cord might be showing that. Yeah, they told you, you're going to give birth to a child that, 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 that can't talk, can't walk, can't think. You know, that's what the doctor had said. So anyhow, fast forward, I go through um, the pregnancy and I was supposed to give birth on the 10th of January of uh, the next year but on 27th of december of this year before i start to i get a bad flu a terrible flu so i decided that because and i don't even know because when i think about it i'm like but why did i make such a decision like really really honestly because in my mind i was like hey, you know don't self-medicate you're about to give birth but it's just a flu mm-hmm. so i said ah, i don't run i said i don't want to self-medicate i'm about to give birth ah, let me go to a doctor so my husband is like, okay, the EDD is in Jan, so obviously we didn't get out with a suitcase, what, you know, so we go to the doctor. So when I talk to him, when I tell him I'm feeling, he laughs and he says, you might be in labor. So in my mind, I get angry. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, eh, the <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this guy wants to start off with this honey. What's wrong with the doctors? Mm-hmm. Anyhow. He insists and he says, lie on the bed. Mm. And when he checks, I'm five centimeters dilated. Wow. I'm in Tinder and I'm supposed to go because I had also even changed hospitals again. I'm supposed to go to another hospital in town. So he looks at me. He says, uh, do you have your sins? I'm like, no. I came because I have a flu. He asks my husband, is your home near? No. Meanwhile, we had left our children at home alone. Israel was um, 14 minus 7, was like 5, no, not 5, yeah, 48, 8, Israel was 8, 7, 7 and a half, yes, 8, 7, and Ronel was 5, and we had left them home, we told them, don't, don't open for anyone, we are mommy and daddy are coming back, because you know how self had gone for Christmas. Anyhow, long story short, the doctor says, rush at the hospital, I'm following you. They rushed me to hospital, 
run leaves me in hospital, rushes home, gets suitcase, find where to leave the children, the whole drama. Brand entered hospital with that first suitcase. Just at the point when the midwife was like, Where are the clothes? You know, like, you know when the midwife comes out, oh, where are we And Brand is like, no, no. no. <laughs> Anyhow, I give that to Madrid. All I'm waiting for is to see if I can feel his spine like this. You know it? Eh? Mm. So the whole time the doctor is dancing the baby like this. Mm. If they go to the baby here, they carry a spine. You get it? Eh? Mm. So of course they check, they put him here. That he's the first baby I didn't fear. Because the other, you know how babies come out? They are too white. They are, yeah, they've been pressed, pressed. Generally, yeah. like is this is money. You know, but for Adrian, I was like, I have to check. So I start checking. You know, I check, I touch, and I'm like, and I feel bones. Eh? Mm. You know, like checking, and I'm like, I feel bones. Anyhow, I get a drill. I this doctor, I've not told him up to I like I haven't told him. I had not told him until that time. Mm. So anyhow, they give me my baby. I go home. I went through a rough time because, like I said, I was quite alone. There were so many other things happening in the background that are not subject of today's testimony. I start the journey of taking care of that child. But you know, every time you are wondering, does he cry properly? Mm -hmm. Does he suckle properly? Mm -hmm. Does he... You che keep checking his feet because you see, you've read all these things about Down syndrome, mm -hmm. over their feet, over the, the, their... over, you know, the space between yeah, their feet. There were so many things. But every little time, I'm doing it. You know, like I had stored up so much. I had a deposit in my heart of faith. Eh? Mm -hmm. I even started to play healing scriptures for the child. I said, in case, in just in case, you know, like how Job said eh? mm. that he would come and he would sacrifice himself in case my children sinned, you know. Mm. And then the child starts to sit, and the child sits properly, and the child starts to crawl, and the child crawls properly, and the child starts to walk, and he walks properly. And the child starts to run, Ooh. and he runs well. But you know, just to take you back a little bit, at the six-week check, mm. I went to see the doctor. Oh, Yulis, how are you? I said, I'm fine. I said, Doctor, I want to tell you something. So I told him, I said, you know, when I came to you, I had been told in hospital X. So he said, really? I said, yes. He said, you man just said you're sensitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, she just didn't want to tell you, or she didn't have to tell you. So the doctor is like, what? I had left the baby in the car. He said, please bring that baby in. He looked at the baby. He's like, this baby is normal. He looks at the theater, you know, like now at six weeks. He's like, this baby is the most normal baby I have seen. Why did they tell you that? I said, that. all I know, as like that blind man who said, me, I don't know. I don't know. It's but all I know is I was blind. But now I see. see. Mm. My son is making seven years. Hallelujah. Because of the power of looking at the devil mm. in the eye mm. and saying no. You know, most believers, and this is when we get into the place of prayer, most mm. believers don't understand that what happened in the lion's den mm. is not that the lions just shut their mouths. Mm -hmm. No. The lion of the tribe of Judah lives on the inside yes. of you. Yes. So the lion of the tribe of Judah was inside Daniel. Daniel. Yes. So when this lion saw the other lion, and they were like, Vanagi, Oamani, Buomo, whatever, you sit back. Mm. Because they looked at the other lion and they're like, Oh, Mugazi, the wise one just shuts their mouth up. And that is what it is. He that is in us is, is greater, greater than the devil that is in the world. Yeah. He is even greater than what the doctor is saying. Yeah. I have doctor friends, I don't despise medicine. I think it's one of God's greatest inventions through men. Mm. But the doctor only knows in part. Yes. Listen to me, in part. The yes. doctor knows in part. Mm. But Jesus knows everything. Yeah. Because he's the one who needs that child together in your womb. Mm. He's the one who made your womb. Mm. He's the one who he's the one who formed you. He's the one who gave you all these things already. Mm. And we said you have to be violent. Yes. You have to be violent. Mm. You have to tear those medical forms mm. and you have to get a matchbox and you have to light them. Mm. You have to say, you have to reach a point and ask yourself, but which report am I going to yes. believe? I am going to believe the report the of the report Lord. Report because some of you, as we begin to pray today, you have been told that you cannot give birth. Mm. Who is this person? Who they have never even created. They, not, they, they, created. they don't. They don't. They cannot even create even my fingernail, the one that I cut off. Eh? Mm. They cannot even create a bit of my hair. Mm. They don't.
not even know the sweat that goes in creation. Mm-hmm. And then they are standing in front of the creation of what another person has created. Mm-hmm. And they are speaking these things in the no. That is when you say Chikafu, eh? that's when you say I drew a line in the sand. Yes. That's when you say I am going to stand mm-hmm. on the promises of God. Mm-hmm. You even become like that little boy who they, he didn't even know how to stand on the promises. He really got to the Bible and stood on top of it. He said, <laughs> I am going to stand on the promises. And they're like, let me stand on top of them. You know, whatever level of faith you are, yes. I want to encourage you. I want you, Julian, to read for us Genesis chapter 25, verse 21, mm-hmm. as we begin to pray. Um, wherever you're watching us from morning, afternoon, whatever, yes. please pray. Please um, Now friend. Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife mm. because she was barren. And mm-hmm. the Lord granted his plea and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Isaac pleaded on behalf of Rebecca. Yes. Okay? Mm-hmm. We are here to plead on your behalf. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that if two agree concerning anything, mm-hmm. after the interview shall do it. But the Bible also says that Pray all kinds of prayers for all men, mm. for all people. And part of it is supplication. Part of it is intercession. Mm. Standing in the gap on your behalf. Bringing pleadings. That is what we are going to plead. Mm. But you see, the Bible says, because she has said that Rebecca was buried. That is what the Bible says. Mm. But you, 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 the one we are going to pray for, you are not buried. You are not buried. Kubanga, those ones, eh, like Jesus cancelled the handwriting mm. of that one. Mm. There is no barren. There is no one who is barren. That's why he, you think God is stupid. He said, be fruitful yes. and multiply. Multiple. You think he's stupid. He cannot say be fruitful when he knows you do not have the capacity to be fruitful. And you are like God. Mm. God has multiplied all of you that are on this network. You, me, everybody who is going to watch this, God multiplied. You are like your father God. The Bible says that just as Jesus is, so, so are you in this world. Yes. Not in common. Yes. So if Jesus creates you, a creator. If Jesus multiplies, you can be multiplied. If Jesus has brethren, you have brethren. If Jesus had brothers and sisters, you have brothers and sisters. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Now, if you're not united with Christ, I want you to stop right there and I want you to give your life to Christ. Say, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I invite you into my heart mm. to be my Lord and Savior. Mm. Now, Julian, I want us to begin to thank God. Yes. Let us thank God for the blessing of mm. children. Mm. Let us thank God that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Mm. Let us thank God that children are a blessing from him and the fruit of the womb is our reward and he has already given us the fruit of the womb. Mm. So yes. let me give thanks to God and, you know, just join me in the background and just begin to pray. Mm. Father, we thank you so much for everyone that is on this network today. We thank you, Jesus, because because you have blessed us. You have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms through Christ Jesus. Because we are united with Jesus. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We praise God. We praise the Lord God, the Lord of our Father, Jesus Christ. The Amplified Version says, may blessing, may praise, may laudation, may theology be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with the Every spiritual blessing given by the Holy Spirit. Blessing in the heavenly realm. Spirit of the living God. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for the gift of children. Father, we thank you for the blessing. We come in thanksgiving. Your word tells us that we should not be anxious for anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we should make our requests known to you. Father, we come in thanksgiving. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise. We enter in. We enter in, we enter in, we enter in. Mukama to you, you know, Piazzo, no Pusins, and no Quebas. Tata was a mood. We come with praise. We come with praise. We come with praise. We come with praise. Let it take it, take it. Rika Yamaka Satana Brakasete. We come with praise. We come with praise. Because you have given us children. You have given us children. You have given us children. You have made the barren woman fruitful. You have made the barren woman. Fruitful. Father, you are telling us in Psalm 113. 
in verse 9, that you brought the barren woman a home, like a joyful mother with children. Father, we thank you for the homes that you have granted your people. We thank you because you have granted them children. We thank you because your tables are full of children. Father, we see children. I see children around tables. I see children around tables. I see children thanking God. I see children blessing the Lord. I see children running across lawns. I thank you. I thank you, oh God. I thank you because none among us is bad. We are fruitful. We thank you for fruitfulness, oh God. We thank you because we are fruitful vines around our husband's table. Oh, we thank you because there is nothing that they have said about us that is true. We thank you because of your report. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We honor you because of who you are. You are an amazing God. You are a mighty warrior. You are a giver of good gifts. You are a giver of perfect gifts. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. Julian, continue praying in Psalm 57. Continue in that verse and give thanks to God for performing all things. Give him thanks for performing all things. Father, we thank you. Because when we cry out to you, O Most High God, you perform things for us. All things. We speak to that womb, Bali Bakosi Etelekata, because our God is a performer. Ile Takalabakata, listen to us, you womb. Lifa Tarakatakata, you carry, you carry, you carry in the name of Jesus. If they've given you any report that instead of a child, there is a fibroid, we rebuke those fibroids today in the name of Jesus. Lipa Kosi Etelebragadikata, because God performs things for you. He performs even in that womb. He performs even in that womb. In the name of Jesus, he corrects the spam count. In the name of Jesus. Lipo kosie telebaka siya talabaka ya. Rika sike telebaka. Rika siye telebaka ta. Rika sakata. The parent has given birth to seven. Lipo siye tela. Because our God is a performer. He performs in that womb. He performs in that womb. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Father, thank, thank you for this good report. Yes. Thank you for this good we report. Them, good we report. receive them in we the name of Jesus. Jesus. We receive them in Jesus' yes, mighty Lord. name. Father, we give you thanks. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, we are going to Colossians chapter 2, and we are going to read verse 14. We are going to read verse 14 uh, of Colossians chapter 2. The Bible says, we will start at verse 13. Mm. And you, being dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, mm. he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespass, mm. having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, mm. which was contrary to us. Mm. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Verse 15, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a, a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. We are now after Thanksgiving. We are getting into a place of repentance for any trespass. And then we are going to get into a place where we'll take on the enemy and we will declare this scripture. Because God, by the power of the blood, we are going to enter by the blood. By the power of the blood, he has wiped out every handwriting. So if you have any things that people have spoken about you, mm -hmm. if you have any things that doctors have said about you, mm -hmm. I want you to present them to the Lord as we are praying this prayer. Because that is a handwriting. Yes. Whatever it is that they've spoken, it becomes a handwriting in the realm of the spirit. Yes. Whatever it is that they've written down, it is a handwriting. Mm -hmm. If the handwriting is not speaking Jesus, it mm -hmm. is contrary. Mm -hmm. And the handwritings bring with them requirements. Yes. Some of them have brought with them requirements that now you have to to take this drug every so often, you have to do this, you get incapacitated, you can't sleep, you can never, because of the requirements of the handwriting. But Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that you who has said that you're not a son of man that you should lie, that you do not change your mind. You have said, have I spoken from a distant place and I have told the children of Israel to seek me in vain? And Lord, the answer is you have not. We come this afternoon saying it is not true. You have not spoken from a land of silence. You have not spoken in a distant land. You have spoken openly in the scriptures. No, Lord, you have not said we'll seek you in vain. You have also said that your hand is not too short to save. 
And we believe that scripture. Lord, we come with the sword of the spirit that says that if we say that we are not sinners, we lie and we cause you to be a liar. But if we come to you and we repent our sins, you are faithful to forgive. Lord, I bring repentance. I bring identification repentance yes. for everyone that is on this network. For the lack of faith. Mukama, some of them you've not yet had them because they've not pleased you. Yes. But this afternoon, Lord, this morning, whichever time of the day we are coming to you, we come in faith and we ask you to forgive us for lack of faith. Mukama to Sony way for making prayers without faith. Father, have mercy on us for praying without faith. Forgive us of what? It is you who tells us in your word that we should come to your type of grace and receive grace and mercy in our time of need. You know we are humans. The Bible says you are familiar with our weaknesses because you are a man of sorrow, familiar with our weaknesses. When you went to the tomb of Lazarus, you also wept. Some of us, our weavings have been in the lack of but we come to you and we ask you, we'll come at you have mercy upon us for the sin of disobedience. You have told us to believe and we disobey. And the Bible says that disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. I pray for this man and this woman, those men and women who have not agreed. And therefore they disagree with you. And yet your word says that come two of you together unless they agree. We bring repentance. Those who have disobeyed, even some doctors have given them instructions and they are sure that that is your instruction that it has come through the doctor and they have disobeyed. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will forgive. And now, Father, your word says that when we were dead in our trespasses, Lord, and in the uncircumcision of our flesh, you made us alive together with you and you forgave our trespasses. We thank you for forgiving our trespasses. But your word is saying that you wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us right now in the name of Jesus. Every handwriting will come to me, Jacob. Those that are under the waters, those that are on top of the waters, those that are in rooms, those that are in cupboards, those that are in shelves, wherever they are, those that are on top of your table, those that are written on your heart, those that are in shrine, those that are in churches, those that are, those that are on the phone, those that are in WhatsApp groups, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus, we use the finger of God. We use the finger of God. We look for them. We look for them using the finger of God. And we rub the handwriting. We write it out. We wipe it out. Not only the handwriting, but even its requirements. Whatever it has required, some of it has required blood. Some of it has required blood. We cancel the handwriting of fibroids. We cancel the handwriting of barrenness. We cancel the handwriting of lost compound. We, we cancel the handwriting. Julian, help me. Whatever handwriting is, begin to just measure them. That the subjects are beginning to open. We cancel those yes. handwritings in the mighty name of Jesus. Of men who have been rendered in impotent. We cancel those handwritings by the blood of Jesus. We cancel. We cancel. You know what the seeds are? Every seed that was planted in that hospital room, we cancel them. We cancel them. We cancel them in the name of Jesus. Some of these are seeds. Some of them are folks that have come to you. We cancel them, them today. We cancel them today. We cancel them today. And they are requirements. We cancel them of age. God doesn't look at our age. He rewards us. We cancel. We cancel every handwriting concerning your age. And its requirements. We that you are close. You are close to men of us. We refuse them. We refuse them. We refuse them in the name of Jesus. And we declare them contrary to the truth. Mm. And therefore, we nail mm. them to the cross. Yes, we nail them to the cross. We nail them to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, Lord. And the Bible also says that he disarmed principalities and powers. He yes, made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in the cross. Father, every principality, every power of darkness. I want you to open that scripture in Ephesians on principalities. Every principality, every kind of principality in your Every power of darkness in your locality, every power of 
evil in your clan, every power of evil in your house, in your room, in the name of Jesus, we disarmed The Bible says that if you want to take over the home of a strong man, you need to first bind the strong man. Therefore, we bind the strong man. Every strong man that is wicked, every wicked strong man that is working contrary to the word of God in your life, we disarm them. We disarm them. We disarm them. We disarm them. We triumph over them like yes. Christ did at the cross. Yes. yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Whatever ruler of darkness that has been ruling in your home, on your marital beds, spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places, in the atmosphere around your homes, in the name of Jesus, we are wrestling against those this afternoon. We are wrestling against embargoes that have been set against your fruitfulness in the name of Jesus this afternoon. Yes. We pull them down. Yes. We pull them down. Yes. We pull them down. Yes. We render them null and void. Yes. We render them powerless in the name of Jesus. Whatever has declared, that you will not be fruitful in your husband's home, in your home. We cancel. We cancel. We cancel. We cancel. We silence them. We silence them. We silence them in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you because your word says that we triumph over them. In the cross, yes. Father, in the cross, we try and move yes. them. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Now, I want us to enter into a time of prophecy. I want us to get into a time of prophecy and declarations. I want you to open First Samuel chapter 1, verse 20. We are going to get into a time of prophecy and we are going to declare things and we are going to speak things that are, are not as though they are because truly they are. I'm going to start by reading Luke chapter 1, verse 13. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 13, that the angel said to him, this, the angel said to Zachariah, do not be afraid, Zachariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Do not be afraid, whoever you are, mm. because the Lord has heard the prayer, yes. and you shall bear a child. Yes. And the Lord is going to give you a name for that child. Yes. Begin to believe God and begin yes. to receive that child. Mm. I declare that you shall receive a child. Mm. I want you to read First Samuel chapter 1, verse 20. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son, and and called his name Samuel, mm. saying, because I have asked for him from the Lord. Because she had asked for him from the Lord. You mm. have asked for a child. Mm. I want you right now to lift your voice and say, Lord, I have asked you for a child. Mm. And I receive a child. And begin to begin to get a sense of the name of a child. And yes. begin to call that child a name. Because the Lord has given that child a name. And the Lord has given you a child. Matthew chapter 1 verse 22 to 23. It says, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Jesus, because virgins here shall bear children. Yes. I thank you, Jesus, because even those that are not virgins will bear children. Sure. I thank you, Jesus, because women that are here that have been declared virgins, yes. they will bear children. Yes. They are fruitful vine around their husband's mm -hmm. table. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are they are blessing mm -hmm. to their to their husbands. Yes, mm -hmm. they bring their husbands favor all the days of their lives. Yes, they do go to their husbands all the days of their lives. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, children are gifts from the Lord. Mm. The fruit of the womb is the reward. Mm. We receive the fruit of the womb. Yes. We receive the reward of yes. God. We seek the reward of God. Not because we have done much, but mm. because Jesus has done yes. it all. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much. The Bible says that Jesus, that God has knit that child together in your womb. In, the, in Psalms 139. Father, we thank you because you are beginning to knit that child together. Mm. We thank you because, yes, the head is there, the eyes are there. We thank you their ears here well. We thank you they have a good brain. We thank you for the nose, the mouth. We thank you for the hands. We thank you for the feet, for the heart. We thank you for the spinal cord. We thank you for the legs. We thank you. We thank you for every child. And we even pray right now. I feel a grace to pray for special needs children. Father, we thank you because there is 
ceiling. Have a for all the children whose parents are listening to me and praying with us. I will prophesy healing. We prophesy restoration. We prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks. We give you glory, Lord. And we honor you. Father, we pray this by the blood. And we seal it all together in the blood. And by the blood of the eternal covenant. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for praying with us. We are going to have another session and another. We'll keep having this coming over different issues. I actually sense today that when I do a teaching, like 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 how the teaching went out on business, that you know we need to occasionally follow them up with prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's really honestly the ministry where I I serve primarily. So I thank you for coming on to this call. If you want prayer support. Uh, please reach out to us and uh, we will be able to pray and support you in prayer, but believe the report of the Lord. And you need to have your faith arise by listening to the word. Mm. When you don't know how to pray, just keep watching this over and over again and pray along with us. Watch and pray along with us. Watch and pray along with us. And the Lord will do great things in your life. There are many dimensions of prayer for children. Mm. We'll pray other dimensions and but then we did thanksgiving and then we did um, repentance. repentance and then we cancelled every handwriting and then we did declarations and we saved the children. Those are the steps that we use today. Until next time, Eunice and Julian, God bless you. Bye bye.